The previous part of this program looked at the freshening charge that's applied to wet charge cells before they're put into service. This part of the program will look at two other common types of charges that are typically applied to substation batteries. These are the float charge and the equalizing charge. The key points that will be covered include the definition of float and equalizing charges when each charge is applied and the basic steps for applying each charge. A float charge is a normal charge applied continuously to a battery to keep the battery fully charged. For a float charge, the voltage is floated at a fixed level slightly above the normal open circuit voltage of the battery. This allows the battery to draw just enough current to overcome its self-discharge losses and maintain a full charge. The float voltage setting is typically specified in cell manufacturer instructions or by company procedures. A general float voltage guideline for lead antimony batteries is 2.15 to 2.18 volts per cell. For lead calcium batteries, a general guideline is 2.17 to 2.26 volts per cell. For the lead calcium battery in this example, the float voltage is 2.2 volts per cell. This is multiplied by the 24 cells in the battery. For a total float output voltage, of 52.8 volts. To apply the float charge to the battery, the float equalize switch or timer on the battery charger is set at the float position. If the charger float output voltage hasn't been set, the float potentiometer is adjusted to provide the required float output voltage to the battery. The charger voltage output is verified by checking the voltage across the positive and negative terminals of the battery. If necessary, the float pot is adjusted to get the precise required float voltage output. Another type of charge that may be applied to a battery is an equalizing charge. An equalizing charge is a charge applied to a battery to raise the specific gravity and cell voltages of weaker cells to a uniform level with the other cells. When battery cells are in service, the cell voltages tend to become unbalanced or unequal. In other words, the voltages of some cells fall below the level of the others. If this continues, specific gravity will begin to fall along with the voltages. In general, if the voltage of any cell falls below 2.13 volts, or if the specific gravity of a cell falls 10 points below its full charge value, an equalizing charge should be given to the battery. The equalizing voltage setting and the number of hours that the equalizing charge is applied are typically specified in cell manufacturer instructions or by company procedures. A general equalizing voltage guideline for lead antimony and lead calcium batteries is 2.33 volts per cell. This is multiplied by the 24 cells in the battery for a total equalizing output voltage of 55.92 volts. To apply the equalizing charge to the battery, the float equalize switch or timer on the battery charger is set at the equalized position. The equalizing charge is applied continuously for 35 to 70 hours or longer. If the charger equalizing output voltage is the same as the freshening output voltage, the equalizing potentiometer will not need to be changed. If the equalizing and freshening output voltages are not the same, the equalizing pot is adjusted to provide the required equalizing output voltage. As usual, the charger voltage output is verified across the terminals of the battery. During the equalizing charge, the same conditions are monitored that are checked during a freshening charge. The pilot cell temperature is noted regularly to ensure that it does not exceed the maximum allowable temperature, and the cells are watched for overflow or excessive gassing. If the temperature or gassing is excessive or if overflowing occurs, charging should be stopped until the cells cool to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. Then the equalizing charge can be resumed. As with the freshening charge, float and equalizing charge voltages and times can vary with the type of battery used and with the load limitations of the DC system. Be sure to determine the specific float and equalizing charge voltage and time requirements for your system. Now, in order for a charger to provide the required direct current to the battery and the loads in the DC system, it must be properly maintained. 
The next part of this program will cover charger inspection and adjustment.